So Tom, welcome to the podcast. Thanks, man. It's good to be here. So your job is Head of Creativity at the Belfry, which is the church next to the Minster. Yeah. So how did that come about? Um, so about four years ago, I started, um, I was asked to look after the music department of the church, um, which is a massively like varied styles of music. We can do anything from like organ, which everyone kind of expects of a church, but mostly it's like bands, um, sometimes acoustic feel, such a range of styles. And I was a musician encouraged in that area. Um, but as I was working there and sort of after sort of six months, I just found myself every time I'd see something go up on our website feeling like, oh, no, we could just do that better. Or, you know, we've got this amazing event that we're running and we've got no kind of promotional materials that matches the, the thing that it's doing or the kind of the, the great event that it's going to be. So I found myself really encouraged and, and doing things on Photoshop and just kind of messing around on Lightroom and doing all these different events, kind of promotional materials and basically saying, look, I'm new to this, but back me in that. And um, I would love to see something grow where we can be a church where people wouldn't expect um, to have a media department. And so my job title sort of morphed into being head of worship and creativity. And I was you know, given this freedom to be a creative um, and paid. <laughs> it was like, what? Amazing. That's the dream, dream it? The absolute dream. Um, but then like develop that, grow interns and bring on staff members and sort of work with filmmakers, animators, photographers, develop the skills myself. So what's your so, background? Did you study music or? Yeah, I mean, I was music at A-level and theater at uni. So it was all kind of creation, performance, and definitely the like front of house stuff, you know, up front, everyone, you know, I'd, I always wanted to be like center of attention kind of yeah. feel, um, which was bad, but it, you know, I loved it. And um, it was more, towards the end of uni kind of got a bit fed up of just doing theatre that I kind of picked up playing at open mic nights and and then grew into kind of photography and kind of went on that little creatives journey other, other ways of expressing myself and um yeah but music's definitely like the foundation like started being saxophone player at nine guitar at 14 and just carried on so so day to day what kind of things go on here at the Belfry? the church has such a thing to offer for the community. Like, for example, our kids work, we, we do like two kids, uh, like children's groups that are not specifically for Christians. Um, and it, without good promotional material, how is that going to get into the hands of parents who are sort of, I don't know what to do with my kid on a Saturday morning. It's like, bring them to one of our groups. So that's where my team like step in and say, look, we've seen what other groups are doing or we've seen this and we just think there's a real kind of niche here with our graphic design or you know here's a little video that we've made for you um so it can be like crazy varied it can be that i diary in three hours of songwriting you know it's it's very free and in some ways and and i know how lucky i am basically in that so you lead a creative team yeah um how do you find managing that when obviously like creativity can be something that's quite individual quite personal everybody has different ideas and styles yeah like I've been told I'm a very encouraging person and I think it is about encouraging people but also there's this sense of like you can't just say to someone right here's point A and here's point B go and do that I often say it's like you're kind of pushing a bit here pushing a bit there and uh, to say it's herding cattle would be a bit rude to the designers but it's definitely like saying you know I'll just maybe just tweak that in a bit there and tweak that in a bit there um, I'd say the important thing is is that they know that that anything that I say that's like critique is critique not criticism and we have that relationship and I've made sure to build that relationship with the guys that we work with because you're so vulnerable as a creative often you know it's kind of like this is my this is my expression mm. but as like a head of the department you kind of have to have the vision to say that's that's great or this needs a bit of work and you essentially the book stops with you so in some ways you've kind of got tailor-made parameters you know they know that they're serving a higher kind of system and it goes up my boss has a job for me that I'd want them to do um but I love to sort of see we've got a like a young designer on the team one of those annoying people who's like 19 already better than everyone at everything <laughs> and like I love to say here's what I would do but like what would you do yeah. have an hour we'll come back we'll, we'll spend an hour on it together and amazingly pretty much 99 percent of the time we've create spark off each other and create mm. something 
neither of us would have imagined. But I think like, yeah, I think the main thing for me with the management side is the day that that people start to think of it as you just criticism or jealousy or envious mm. or anything like that, it all falls apart. There always needs to be that level of commitment to each other and the vulnerability to each other that says, when I'm going to say, hey, this needs a bit of work, it's not like me lording it over you. It's me saying, you're amazing. Here's how we can make it even better. So on the topic of learning, is there anything you've picked up recently that you wish you'd known five years ago? Yeah, I, I think one of the big things for me is done is better than perfect. I've kind of nicked that from a YouTuber that I follow. But there's a sense in which like I, I'm recently kind of, I'm sure everyone experiences this, go through kind of peaks and troughs with different aspects of creativity. So I've just finished my two-year binge on electric guitar and I've just got massively into photography and filmmaking. I have no idea how to use some of the filmmaking tools that the guys here are amazing with. So I kind of wish that I was better at that. But the thing that I have noticed when I've been putting my photos up on Instagram is this tendency to start looking for likes or looking for gratification. But the five years ago, that was what I lived for. Mm. And I would tailor my creativity to that. And um, I remember doing a, like a talk to some of the team here about how how often we are we change what we do because of criticism. And that's kind of like accepted. You know, if I said to you, oh mate, I just thought your songs were really rubbish. You might think, oh, maybe I need to do something different. Or you might be like, no, these are my, you know, you kind of, you really respond to criticism, but often we don't realize that we respond to praise in a very similar way. So if someone's saying, hey, I really like that song that you do. And it's like this, or hey, I really like that photo when you were, you know, the sunrise photo, I think they're, they're brilliant. You might, in the next thing that you're going to create, think, well, they really like that sunrise photo, so I'm going to go and try and reproduce that. Yeah. Um, and I, I kind of got wise to that and realized if I'm just going out to please people or search for Instagram likes or find the right hashtag to get some people looking at my stuff and, and I'm constantly like on my phone or checking for this, if that's all I'm doing, then like my work is, is not me, it's, it's theirs, essentially. And... Um, I think that, that that's a real learning process and I go through it and again, like peak and trough with that. But I guess I've really learned to watch out for the praise as much as the criticism. Yeah, it's great that you've picked up on that. I think there's a lot of people who kind of get themselves into a sort of spiral when they just keep doing the same thing and worry about what people think. And it's sort of, if you're already creating the next thing, it doesn't matter what they think about the last thing because you're already on to the next thing. Yeah, and I think like the more you do that, the more you see like, these great things happening and I, I think there's a there's like a songwriting metaphor I think it might have been like an old hymn writer that everyone's like we need to write more songs like him like back 200 years ago and there's like 10 that are kind of his canon he wrote like 3,000 songs and we remember 10 of them mm. and I think there's something in that there that's like you might take 150 photos on a shoot and one of them's good why not apply that kind of similar logic to your poetry, your writing, your um, any kind of creative expression, like just keep doing it and every day hone it. And sometimes you'll mine some gold, sometimes it'll just be dirt, but you know, mm. you just gotta keep going. That's encouraging to me. Yeah, it's the process as well. If you enjoy the process, yeah. then keep repeating it over and over and stuff will come. Yeah, yeah there's a, another YouTuber. I'm kind of into my YouTuber at the moment. He's something like, you know, learn repeat keep you know keep learning repeat keep yeah. learn that repeat and you just think yeah like oh, why did i never think like that so <laughs> photography is something you kind of picked up more recently what made yeah. you get into that well i growing up like i'm 27 so i'm not that old but it feels like i'm really old as a creative because everyone's really young um my brother had a 5d mark one canon 5d mark one and i remember being like this is like the best camera ever and he had it brand new so it was like very well expensive um, recently I had like a 600D, which I loved, but I was like taking photos and comparing them to friends and they'd be like, oh, this is all detail. Um, but I picked up a really reasonably priced secondhand 5D Mark II. And I'm not saying it's like all about gear, but I think that I really wanted to see like detail in landscapes. I love going out and adventuring and yeah. capturing a bit of that in, in my photos. And the camera I had before just wasn't capturing that and mm. it was a bit disappointed. I'd come back from a shoot and get a Lightroom and be like, it's not what I saw or it's not how I pictured it. And I finally kind of got a tool that matches the, what I'm imagining when I'm taking the photo. Yeah. It's an old camera, but um, it's like stepping up from 
half decent intermediate to old professional so mm. it's quite cool it's an interesting topic the kind of idea of using old gear because obviously yeah. if you look back you know people still took great photos 50 years ago and before yeah. that and i think it's really like i remember i was reading a review of this it's the 5d mark ii i was like surely it can't be like awful because yeah digital cameras are quite new in the grand scheme of things and it was like oh the first presidential portrait was taken on a 5d mark ii like first digital camera presidential presidential portrait so barack obama i thought yeah i mean if it was good enough for like yeah that photo which is like historically it'll be an acclaimed photo we'll be looking at that photo in 100 years time i'm sure it's like good enough for me so what's exciting at the moment creatively i'm looking to get better at filmmaking so that's definitely something that i'm pursuing and i'm like a proper new by it so i'm completely new in everything um i've just learned what LUTs are and I have like just started looking at some film cameras and I pick up like my friend's A7S and my friend's GH4 and I'm looking at it like, okay, kind of feels like my camera, but it's just not the same. And it's a whole different aspect. Um, and actually, I'm sure like all creatives will kind of understand what I'm saying here. I have this vision of what my filmmaking looks like in my head. Mm. Now I'm excited to to learn how to actually achieve that with my skill set. So like I pay for... Adobe, I need to learn how to use Premiere or like I've got Lightroom, uh, not Lightroom, Final Cut on my yeah. laptop. I need to learn how to use it. It's like looking at this blank piece of paper and starting again. So I'm really excited about getting into filmmaking. Uh, so about New York, what's really exciting you in New York? Are there any people that are doing really cool things at the moment? Any events? Well, I'm really interested to see what this Mediale actually ends up looking like. Um, meeting with the guys, they seem so into it and so like excited about it. But I kind of want to get my head around it a bit more and that's that's cool and then actually like working with going on these photo walks with plastic fortune something i'm starting to get into and hearing stuff like this and meeting people like johnny who you had on your last podcast and going to his recording studio i think what's exciting me is what's in the last sort of six months it's like someone's just opened the door and said hey look where all these guys are mm. i think just because i was so busy and and life i just didn't actually actively seek creatives um i was a bit closed off from it and what i've realized is we're so lucky and we've got to not be down on ourselves and we've not got to be like, oh, there's this place down the road or there's these places there and these are full of creatives. It's like York will never be known for its creativity if all the creatives leave. So I'm just excited to see that there are lots of people, people like you, people like um, Johnny and Luke and, and all these guys that we kind of meet with and um, they're out there creating. And I hope that we can have more festivals that actually do showcase that and more events that do showcase, you know, homegrown talent something that I'm more and more excited about, like working in York. And that's something that at the Belfry, we're like really keen to get to know some more creative people, kind of spark ideas off each other. And like I was, um, I'm always kind of aware that we're, we're right in the centre. We've got these two buildings that are just off Stonegate, just off Petergate, you know, mm. runs right next to York Minster, that for large periods of the week are empty and need creatives in them. I know that some some of your creatives groups like Plastic Fortune have met and used our Belfry Hall and things like that. But I just say to people like, hey, come and come and have a chat. Let's, let's see if we can do some more stuff mm. because all it's going to do is encourage creativity in the city and I'm all about that. You know? So you're actively looking for people to come and use the spaces? Yeah. I mean, like, come have a chat, see what we can do. We've had concerts in there. We've had BBC recording in there. We've had, you know, musicians. Honestly, if there's musicians listening to this and need a really cool vocal acoustic with a nice real reverb, like an actual real reverb, come and use our building because it's incredible. Mm. Like for vocal recording, if you want that kind of haunting reverb, it's perfect because it's not like the Minster where it just goes off. (laughs) And like eight seconds later, which I've experienced with the bands that we do, um, yeah, like the church is great. I know we've had some recording artists to use it and stuff. So so to wrap up, um, you're really interested in getting people to come and use the buildings, come and have a chat with you. Uh, where's the best place for them to do that if they want to have a conversation with you? Yeah, just go on our website. So it's belfry.org. Um, belfry spelt slightly different, not the golf club. So just kind of have a Google and you'll find us. Um, go in there on the contact page, just click on my face and you can email me. Um, or just come into the office, ask for me. We're just based, literally I said, right next to Yorkminster. Um, and we just love to chat even if it's just let's go for a coffee and find out what you're about you can find out what I'm about you know we don't even have to like pursue anything down the road but like it would just be great to meet more creative people Uh, I think they will inspire me in what I do and hopefully I can encourage them in what they're doing cool what about your photos you got Instagram or somewhere we can watch you develop yeah at Tom Holmes with T-H-O-M 
H O L M E S. I'd love you know, you know, follow me. You'll see that like in the last two weeks it's gone from being like a, oh look at this cool thing to like here are my serious photography photos. <laughs> um but yeah, if you know, check it out and give me some feedback. I'd love to see that. Cool, well done. Thanks, Thanks for being on the podcast. No worries, thank you, man.